Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, Learning Go High Level with Jacob. And today we're back with another tutorial video focusing on the contacts tab or the CRM portion of high level. And we're gonna be talking about how to add custom fields in the CRM so you can actually customize this for any industry. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, go subscribe my channel, give this video a like, hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I release new content. And if you currently don't have Go High Level and you're wanting to get it, I encourage you to click my affiliate link down below in the description. This will actually give you a 30 day trial instead of the 14 day free trial that high level gives you. And everybody that uses my affiliate link and is a part of that uh, program gets access to my special community and a free coaching call. So go ahead and click that down below. If you're a small business and you want a more customized solution and you don't wanna do high level on your own, we have paid programs where we can set it up for you or you can purchase our High Five Connect, which is our white label version. So there's more information down below for those that are interested. But what we're gonna be focusing on today is how to add custom fields because not every CRM is created equal. And if you're using this on the agency level that you're gonna be giving this to clients, sometimes they want special fields that just don't exist. And if you don't have a custom CRM, you can't just add those fields. So I'm gonna show you today how to customize this CRM to match your specific industry and your specific business in that industry and how to keep those fields organized with folders. And you can create any field you want. It could be a line of text, a paragraph text, a drop down, a radio button, check boxes. It could be a signature field. It could be an upload file. The possibilities are endless. And I'm gonna show you how to take this to the next level. All right, so now we're in the contacts portion of the CRM. So go ahead and click that. And then you can make that menu bar smaller by hitting that little green arrow there. So we have the Golden Girls in here. Again, this is a demo account. So this is not real information. And so we're gonna talk about how to add custom fields, but I wanna take a look at how things are organized. So as you plan what fields you need to add for your clients or for your business, you can understand how things are organized. So I feel like this is very important to understand. Right now, things are organized in folders and I'll show you how to add folders and fields here in a second. So right now we see the contact information, general info and additional. So if I click on contact, you know, it's first name, last name, email, phone, date of birth, where the lead came from and the type of lead. You can't edit this contact type, um, but you don't really want to. It's either a lead or it's a client customer. And then General info is more like the address, the business name, the website, time zone, and then additional info is generally blank, depending on if you used any snapshot, depending on the industry. So uh, we can add content in here or we can create additional folders. So one good example of this would be if I were to look at this real estate CRM that we did, you see right here, I created lead info folder. And so lead type, are they a buyer, seller, investor, renter, all of that stuff. And then lead status, time purchase frame, type of property, interested area. So we can go through and select those things. And this is really helpful when you wanna look at a lead. Imagine if we had to tag all of this. This would get very messy very quickly. And a lot of it with this fields, because once I create these fields, I can add these to a form and you can even create custom fields and forms that will automatically fill this out if somebody answers this. So if I have them, I ask them some of these questions like, what type of services are you interested in? Buying, selling, leasing, investing? Guess what happens? It'll automatically select um, what, they, what they're interested in, right? So now I already have this field pre-populated. If I'm asking them in the scheduling appointment, what type of properties are you interested in? What area? What's your time frame? Or if I have a you know a form that's a buyer intake form, this will do the same thing. No matter if you're in you know medical industry, you're in home services. This is easy to do because you can get additional info and have it already populated in the CRM. So when you're talking with them, you can quickly read through and know exactly what they need. Look, I have transaction info, additional info. These are forms that we created. So consultation form is there. So it might ask additional information. And so those are stored there so you can see how they filled out their form. So it's important to understand how this lays out. So that way you can start making a list of the fields that you need that you don't wanna use as a tag instead. So. So let's go back to my example over here. If we are going to do this, we can from here or where I was at, click 
this little gear icon, and this is gonna show us all of the fields we have. So we can search fields. Um, you can see right now there are 23 pages of fields in here that we use, okay? And you can see the folders. We have contact, general info, additional info. Maybe we wanted to add a folder like I had, so we would click add folder, lead info. Let's say I was gonna create that. And then you can say, is this under the company opportunity or is this a contact? It's usually mostly gonna be contact. And there we go, now we have our lead and full folder. If we click inside of it, now we can add new fields or add new data. So if I wanna come over here, I can click single line field, hit next, you can put in the placeholder over here. So if there's a default placeholder that you want in the form, it would show here. I usually leave it blank, but you can name the field, okay? So let's say we were going to do um, time frame, maybe time frame for whatever product they're purchasing. So we can come through and then we go save, and now this is a time frame thing. So if we were to go back here, to contacts, click on Blanche. We're going to now see down here that there's a lead info folder, okay? And there's a time frame. So let's go back to editing. Let's go back to our folder. And let's look at some of the other types of fields that we can add. So we click add field. So that way you don't have to move it to um, a folder. But we come over here, you can do single line. Multi-line would be like a paragraph, multiple lines of text a text box list, numbers. So if you only want them to enter numbers or only enter a phone number or a, a monetary value, so money, you can create those fields. So let's do a drop down because this would be similar. Now a drop down multiple would function like this. So as I'm here under lead type, I can say that, well, they're looking to buy and sell. This would be a drop down multiple that they could select multiple options at one time, okay? It's a little, little nicer looking than a checkbox because it doesn't take up as much space. It's a drop down. But if we go here, you're basically gonna give the field name and then you can enter the options, okay? Now, usually here you want to put the option name and it'll option, fill it in. So if I wanted to do like buyer, it's automatically going to put it in there. And you just add another option, seller, and then let's say renter, and let's say I wanted to make these alphabetical, I can move these around how I want them or I can delete them. Now, one thing to notice is if you ever come edit these fields, it is going to affect every field that's ever been edited. And on top of that, if you have workflows, which we'll talk about later in another video, this could affect the workflows if it's looking for that value. So be very careful of when and how you delete these, especially if they've already been used, okay? Additional preferences is if you don't want this long, so if I were to go when, um, what type of real estate services are you interested in? That's a long field. So I could, you know, I can trim this down to say um, lead, Okay, because what you can do is when you use these in a form, you can go back and change the label to for whatever you want, okay? So don't feel like you have to add the question there. You can just call this lead type if you want, or like this. And then when you go to create a form, you can change the label to what you want. So you can add as many options as you want. Uh, Radio Select will offer the same thing. You're gonna come in here and keep adding options, okay? If you wanna allow custom values where they're entering their own, you can. And so you can now have the option to upload files with that as well. And then we have checkbox, date picker, file upload, and signature. File upload is great if you need them to upload documents. It'll get filed directly under, like we showed last time in the last video, under their contact. If I were to click on that contact, there on to the right, there is a tab for documents. This would automatically file under there. If you need to get their signature and you need to show that their signature is on file, 
authorizing something, you can save that as well. So that's basically how you're going to add fields. If you ever need to move a field, you can always select it and then move to group. There's certain fields you can't move, but if you created a field and you need to move it, you would just click move to group and select the folder that you want to move it to. You can also rearrange these folders in any order. So if you want the lead info to be on top, you can do that. And that's how it will reflect when you look at your contact. Pretty easy. Just think about the custom fields that you would need that would be unique to each individual that you need to get that information and that you possibly could need that information in the future for an automation. Um, one thing to think about too is when you're creating a field, um, let's say time frame, maybe I don't want them to enter an actual time frame for them to say, oh, January 2025. Maybe I want them to select January 2025 so that the, the data is the same across the board to prevent, to prevent against typos or misspellings or you want to control the information that's put in. Maybe I say, what is your budget? I'm looking for zero, it doesn't matter what industry, zero to you know, 150,000, 150,000 to 250,000. You rather just know instead of exact a dollar amount, then that's the time that you're gonna to want to use a drop down or a checkbox or a radio select button. Like you, if you're asking yes or no questions, you know, it's either gonna be a select or a radio button. So think about when you need content to be very specific. So that way, if you're creating an automation or a trigger or checking to see if something's equal to something, in order for that workflow to continue and you need the information to be the same every time, that's when you would not wanna use any type of single or multi-text line. So keep those things in mind and uh, keep this organized. And now you can customize each sub account. This will only affect this sub account. It will not affect any other sub account. And this is how you can make a custom CRM solution, not only for your business, but if you're considering reselling this as a sub account, you can make every sub account unique to that individual and to that business. All right, so I hope you found that information helpful. You know, it's my goal on every video to give you something that you can implement today to learn, go high level even better and use that to grow your business. So if you have any questions about what I went over, drop those down in the comments below. If you need help with high level, let's say you're an agency and you're wanting to get this set up and scaled up for a business and you have already purchased high level, we have coaching plans available. We can do custom setups for you. We have a full service marketing company that's available to help. If you don't have high level, you can go down and click my link to get a 30 day trial instead of the 14 day that high level offers. And because you used our affiliate link, you get access to our free community and a coaching call with me to ensure your success with high level. Maybe you're a small business and you don't need a full account and you don't want to manage that. You don't need sub accounts and you want your own uh, customized version of high level done by professionals. You can actually go get our white labeled version high five connect and there's more information down below about that so if you have any questions reach out to me and if you want to keep seeing content like this you know exactly what to do go ahead and hit that subscribe button give this video a like hit that notification bell and i will see you guys in the next video